Goon Squad, what it is. Goon Squad, welcome back to Correctional Officer Stories with Steve. Here to bring you another video. Um, hopefully this gets uploaded sometime today. Um, so good morning to you all. Um, hope you're having a good morning so far. Stand by real quick, stand by. Anyway, my bad. So, what's happening with all y'all, man? Hey, check it out. We almost had 600. We had like 550. Um, if you haven't done so yet, go check out my video with Savage Studios. He's got another former, uh, I think he's a former correctional officer on there. Talking about um, like a prison officer gang um, back in California. He was an author of the book. Green something, I can't remember. I just watched it too. Drawing a blank. So go check that out. Go drop a like on my video. Uh, if you haven't yet, subscribe to his channel. And if you haven't subscribed to me, the hell you waiting on? Hit that subscribe button. Ring that, hit that bell notification, boy. I'm just playing. Um, anyways, how's everybody's Sunday morning going so far? Hopefully good, like I said. Um... Thanks for rocking with me, Goon Squad. We're going to continue to rock out. We are going to get to 1K, and then we're just going to continue to go up from there. Um, as you saw my video uh, the other night, <clears throat> um, Officer Gene Lee did pass away. He was a detention officer here in Maricopa County um, Detention Center um, at the Lower Buckeye Jail. So, again, much respect to him. Um, prayers again and condolences to his family, friends, and uh, fellow law enforcement brothers and sisters. Um, they did him. They did do it right. They brought him um, from a hospital with a full escort, so that was awesome, super awesome. That that's all how it always should be. Whether you're in corrections, whether you're a detention officer, whether you're a police officer, we're all a law enforcement family. So when something like this happens, especially on the job, um, it's tragic. Now, you tend to see more oftentimes than not if a correctional officer or detention officer um, is killed and it isn't in the line of duty death and it's on their own time, um, the media really doesn't cover it. However, if you're a police officer, um, they cover it heavily. So, so I hope it, uh, in the future that will change. No disrespect to law enforcement as far as police officers, but... Please give corrections and detention officers the respect that, that we deserve. We walk that fucking fine line and uh, we deserve that, that, uh, that um, pat on the, I don't even know what you would call it. We just deserve it, right? We deserve that respect, I guess. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so in the facility, when I first started working at, uh, Lewis facility, right? We had a lot of AB um, guys on our yard. Um, we had a couple, we had pretty much, we had a step down program, right? So all the heads of the races were in this step down program. They all had jobs back in ACI. Um, they did various things like painting. They did a lot of painting, a lot of buffing the floor of floors up in admin. Um, rebuilding fence, anything you can think of that was labor related, they did that. Now, <clears throat> we had two of the highest ranking AB members um, on our yard out at Lewis. And um, this is back in like 2011. Um, two of the highest ranking AB members in the state of Arizona. Obviously, I'm not going to put any names out there, but um, I used to see on the rec field. Um, it used to happen a lot where they would check a lot of the new the newbies coming in, right? So they'd check them. It'd be a quick check. Um, it might be an elbow or a quick slap or a, a you know a, a quick a quick dome. But um, I'd see it a lot, and uh, nothing really ever happened. Like the tower didn't go crazy. Like it was. It happened so quick. It was like we. Like, I knew they were checking them. I knew they were checking the the newcomers to the yard. So I wasn't like, it wasn't like it was going to continue. So there was no need to go out there and, and 
like be stupid about it you know what i mean like that's just it's prison it's prison rules it wasn't like it was happening every day it wasn't like he the you know the person checked him and then it continued to happen like it was just a quick check maybe a shove maybe a quick bow um to get that person back in line and then they would go walk the track with another one of the higher ranking a b um guys but um i would say for sure um the a b ran that yard at the time we were a gp yard obviously um and they were the majority on the yard um i used to go to the head one of the heads quite often he lived in uh building two two baker um like two baker six so him and they both lived together the heads i would go to that uh cell often and uh say hey listen man i need you to get you know billy back in line and uh or he's out of here He's super disrespectful and, uh, you know, I remain respectful. So, you know, make it happen. And I didn't say it like that. You know what I mean? Like it was always cool. Like no, you know, no biggie got you. Um, it wasn't like he was doing a favor for the corrections, a corrections officer, because, you know, obviously the, there's politics to that. Um, it was just that person would get in line. Now, if same thing, if a correctional officer continued to disrespect like they're, their people, they would come to us, give us the warning. Hey, listen, if this continues, we're going to go ahead and handle it. Here's your warning, basically. And that's not how it was worded. It was just like, hey, get this person in line. Super disrespectful. <sighs> so I dealt with a lot of the, the ABs. A couple of those guys got out after doing several years, like 20 years. Um, I think another one, I think one of them got out and came right back. Um but those guys were constantly being chased by our SSU staff or um, security threat group staff that were trying to validate these guys. And I think one of them ended up getting validated right before he got released. He got They validated him. They sent him to SMU. Um, and that was it. Once you get validated, it's over. They rip you off the yard. Um, and then basically do, you do the rest of your time. In like a like a shoe setting, like a lockdown setting. Um, however, we don't call it the shoe here. So, pretty interesting stuff. Um, I'm not going to get too far into it. I got to refresh my memory on a lot of the stuff that I used to study. I used to study a lot of the AB stuff. I used to try to, you know, we'd get letters and we'd try to, you know, read them. Obviously, they were in all kinds of different writing. Um, so we used to try to, tr um, translate them into what the hell they were saying. You know, if there was a green light out there, because there was a lot of communicate, a lot of piggybacking where they would try to communicate back and forth from Florence central unit to, uh, Lewis, um, Tucson complex Cimarron unit. As a matter of fact, when we changed over yards and we went from, gp to pc all of our gp inmates went down to tucson cimarron and that's and that was a level four yard so we remember we were a level four gp yard so you know shit used to go down not not often i we were a pretty damn good gp level four yard like um i was never intimidated to come to work never afraid that's just not my personality but yeah I, I used to like to come to work um, I did work down in the max unit, but I used to come off onto the yard quite a bit and interact, um, especially when I transitioned up to visitation and we had all those guys going to visitation. That's where all a lot of the dope transaction would come in. Obviously, it's the easiest way to get it in. Um, but again, for you new officers coming in and for you current officers, just remember to watch each other's backs as we've seen the situation happen with officers. detention officer Lee. Who knows what happened? All we know is what the media reported. They said he was grabbed by the throat, legs swept out from under him, um, and basically from the head trauma from hitting the ground. That's what it was. I haven't heard anything else, so it could have been something completely different. They have relocated that inmate to Pinal County, which was a good call by Sheriff Penzone. Um, and that inmate will probably do the rest of his life in prison. Not probably, he will. Um, so... All you officers coming in, as I said earlier in the video, 
once you get to know your GP yard and you see little mini checks when the, you know, the, the heads are like checking their new, and it's usually not the heads. They send, you know, some of the lower guys to do this stuff. If you know it's a quick check and it ain't going to continue, don't go up there and lock the whole yard down and pull them off the wreck field and blah, blah, blah. You, there's not, not going to be any marks. You know what I mean? Like just keep it, keep it moving, man. Keep it moving. Just remember to re firm, fair, and consistent because you'll be locking down the yard all the time because they'd be checking them quite a bit. So just let that, chalk that up to the game, chalk that up to the politics in the game in prison. Now, obviously, if you see something happen, it's like right in front of you, it's a fight, you know it's going down. You gotta take action, right? You're responsible for the custody and care of these inmates. So I'm not talking just to be negligent, but if you see something happen on the rec yard and you know it's just, that's what it is, and then you know you don't have to get all crazy about it, then keep it moving. But you do need to do your job. Don't 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 get it twisted here. I, I'm I'm telling you to do your your job, but you know use some common sense, right? So anyway, y'all, that was just a little touch on the A B. I know you guys want to hear a lot more, um, but I don't want to throw a lot of information out there before I remember my facts, um, because I used to study a lot of the A B and and know what they were doing. Um, I had a I had a uh, when, when I was working lockdown, um, I had a couple skinheads come in there. I think they were NLR. Um, I can't, I, but I, I'm not going to touch on that because it's a whole nother topic, whole nother thing. Um, I think J rock, if you've watched his channel, he's explained a lot of that. He, he talked about it on Badger's channel. Um, so Badger, if you're watching this, I will have communication tomorrow. So I will call you, um, tomorrow afternoon and um nephew if you're watching this we need to get that second interview done so if you get all for all you guys that haven't go watch my uh nephew and i's interview um it's about him being blind having to do time in the county jail with a disability um it's in my videos if you haven't watched it go check it out smash that like button and subscribe so hopefully we'll be bringing you that part two interview this week and then um We'll go from there. So, uh, once again, thank you all to all my goon squad for continuing to rock with me. Keep smashing that like button. Share my videos and uh, sus subscribe. I will continue to leave my PayPal link in the bottom. Like I said yesterday, you don't have to donate. But if you want to, you can. That will help me uh, towards my laptop. Uh, to get a, a better laptop, just to get better stuff for the channel, right? So if you want to donate, you can. Awesome. Thank you. I much appreciate that. If you don't want to, then you just give me the bird and just continue to watch my channel. Peace out.